Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why the Patriots and Cowherd need to be concerned about 40-year-old Tom Brady. Slow down. <laughs> I'm Cowherd, and I'll tell you why everybody, including you, Whitlock, needs to just calm down, pump the brakes, calm down. speak for yourself, starts now on a very optimistic Friday as a Patriot guy. I feel very optimistic. Alex Smith, four TDs, 300-some-odd <laughs> yards. Hello and welcome. All right, we're joined today by Hall of Famer Warren Moon and Super Bowl champion Eric Davis. Let's start in New England, where my Kansas City Chiefs embarrassed the Patriots last oh. night. And Tom Brady looked every bit of 40 years old, just like I told you. The aging quarterback missed open receivers, completed less than 50% of his passes, and threw zero touchdowns. Here's Brady after the game. I just think we need to, you know, have more urgency and, uh, you know, go out there and perform a lot better. And that, you know, is a winning attitude and a championship attitude that you need to bring every day. And, uh, you know, we had it handed to us on our own field. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, it's a terrible feeling. And, uh, you know, there's only people that can do something about it in that locker room. And we got to dig a lot deeper than we did tonight because we didn't dig very deep tonight. Look, I love Tom Brady. He's a Michigan man. That was Brady's first home loss when leading at halftime and after the third quarter, and only his second home loss when leading by at least 10 points. Look at those numbers. That is incredible. Cal Hurd, <laughs> should the Patriots be worried about Brady showing his age? Now, you don't want to look at the 87. <laughs> you want to look at the one. <laughs> the one was last night. If I was a what movie director and I had 87 Oscars and one bomb, would you point <laughs> to the bomb or the... First of all, there's a difference between... Again, yeah, you're just... You're paying attention to the one. Kyle, what did I tell you was going to happen? Last oh, okay. Week? Listen, what did I tell you sometimes a guy just, you know, closes his eyes, throws out stuff. Let's be honest. Is that there's a difference between excuses, dog ate my homework, and reasons, our school bus got into a wreck on the way to school, I'm late. Okay, so Edelman's out, and then we find out before the game, Malcolm Mitchell's out. Oh, my God. Malcolm Mitchell was out? By the way. Are you And then Amendola okay? got hurt. And then Eric Berry pretty much said, Gronk, you're not going to catch a ball tonight. That's his top four receivers. And Hogan had to go up against maybe the best pure corner cover in Marcus I'm Peters. Cool. Did they sign Brandon Cooks? Did I miss that middle? Yeah, he oh, hasn't played did. one game with him. Oh, oh, okay. These are, listen, <laughs> this is a timing offense. Isn't it realistic to think with all the new pieces, the timing wasn't great against a good so, team? I, I'm shocked you didn't say all this yesterday and predict this loss. <laughs> Come <before>. on! <laughs> why, why would... Look, man. That's what happens sometimes, though, when you go two weeks or two and a half weeks without playing a football game, and then you go into the season. And that's what I don't like about all these players not playing in the fourth preseason game. You talk about a timing offense. Tom Brady needed that timing. He didn't look like he had it last night. He, he didn't? didn't look sharp at all. I'm not concerned about the rest of the season. I'll be concerned if he's if he's throwing the ball like this in week two and week three. But for week one, he did not look sharp at all. He did, that, those balls didn't have a lot of velocity on them. They were floated. They weren't. They were inaccurate. Something that you're not 40. used to seeing from 40. him. 40. But that looked 40. He, we said the same thing when he was 38 and went to Kansas City and they got beat 41-7. I, I, I thought he was done then. At that time, but what did he do? He came back and won a Super Bowl. He was pretty years. good in the second half of that Super Bowl. <laughs> he was 39 then. Oh, was that last night? I was talking. I was talking to Dud Gottlieb last week on the show on air, and I said he's gonna miss Edelman. No, you and, said that. And, yeah. and everybody, the Twitterverse went crazy when I said without this player, with, he's missed Grunk. You had Moss. Moss moved on. He's had. He's. You can look at all the different players and the different people within this offense. But since they have implemented Edelman into the offense. I said they were going to have an issue because Grunk, I'm, I'm sorry, without him, he has been a below average quarterback, his quarterback rating. He doesn't win games. His, his record, he has a losing record since Edelman has been a part of the offense. They spent the entire OTAs. They spent the entire um, pre uh, preseason with Edelman there. Then he got hurt. So you, and what do you do in preseason? You're preparing for week number one. Right. So now you got to change everything. So am I concerned that they're going to fall apart? No, they're not. But they're going to have Josh McDaniels. Gonna have, he has to make to adjust. adjustments. Yeah. Have to they got to change the now, offense th now. There are concerns. Like I didn't think Gronk. Gronk was off. I don't think they have a pass rusher. I do think in the NFL sometimes you spend your money on one side or the other, and they've spent a lot of their money on offense. And when Hightower gets hurt, 
There are not a lot of playmakers on that defense. They Those are real. Some very good players on defense over the last couple of years, whether it's Jamie Collins, whether it's Chandler Jones, and then they lose Hightower in the game, their best defense. Listen to player. all these names that are being thrown <laughs> out. Why can't we talk about Tom Brady and the name that no one wants to bring up? The initials are FT. I don't need a graphic to show you this because everybody already knows it. Father Time is undefeated. Has a better record than Brady and Belichick. The man is 40 years old. Warren Moon but look at was this. a Hall but of Fame quarterback. Age creeps up on you. No, I don't know where it, it creeps but. up. But look at the but look at the offense and look it's at what game. they do. Look at what this one game, third down. What what were they doing? They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't do anything on third down and fourth and one because you're not worried about Edelman and that option route. They could stack the line of scrimmage and stop them. The offense is different without Edelman, and they have to adjust for so, it. Uh, on the first play of the game, when Tom dropped back and overthrew a wide open receiver. Oh, yeah, never, that was because of Edelman. No, no, that was just a bad throw. Yeah. That happened. Well, he did, he, he had missed bad, one. He has bad throws every game. He had one in the Super Bowl a couple years ago when he could have got ten, Welker down the ten middle. Ten interceptions a year. You knew damn well from the first pass <laughs> on, you were like, you started looking for your phone. Is Willock going to text me? But I waited for the entire game because I, I didn't want to go prematurely. You knew from the first pass but there when, was a problem. When, he missed that first pass, and then he drove them down, and they scored. Okay. I, you know why <laughs> I didn't text throw. you? I didn't text you because I was having deep conversations with my lovely wife. <laughs> did you see the throw he had to Gronk where he, he he falls on the ball and it comes out? But that was a great throw yeah, on that first drive. Yeah, that was amazing. Too, so. Could have been 24-7. That was one of his 16 completions. That would have been 17, I'm sorry. Yeah. He would have been 17 of 35. This is the Speak for Yourself podcast. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. Before the show moves along, I wanted to tell you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. That means Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine, and newspaper publishers. And good news, speak for yourself, listeners. You can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial at www.audible.com speak. And unlike a streaming or rental service, with Audible, you own your books. Membership includes one free audiobook a month as well as exclusive sales. Download and listen on any iOS device, Android, Amazon, Fire tablets, or Windows phone. Can I give you my personal Audible recommendation? Hatching Twitter by Nick Bilton. It's the inside story of how Twitter was created. It's got twists and turns, completely changed the way I look at Twitter. Listen to it on Audible. Remember, for your free audiobook with a 30-day trial, go to www.audible.com speak. That's www.audible.com slash speak for your free audiobook with a 30-day trial. Welcome back, Warren Moon. Joined now by Super Bowl champ Seth Joyner. Let's return to last night's game. Alex Smith made Tom Brady look like, well, Alex Smith. (laughs) The Chiefs quarterback blew up the narrative that he doesn't throw the ball down the field. Four touchdowns, two that went for 75 yards uh, or more, which matches his career total heading into the game. Whitlock, after that performance, your buddy, are you buying the Chiefs as a contender? Well... Yes and no. The Eric Berry getting hurt hurts a lot. A lot. He he's their best player on the team and certainly on the defense. Shut down Gronkowski. They the Chiefs were legitimately my pick to represent the AFC. I got the Falcons and the and the Chiefs. They lose Eric Berry for the season with a torn Achilles, and so it's hard for me to to stay in that same position. You lose one of the best defensive players in the league, but. In terms of what we're going to see from the Chiefs' offense, Kareem Hunt is for real. Yeah. Tyreek Hill is for real. Uh, Travis Kelsey, when he doesn't do really stupid things, is for real. And Alex Smith is backed up against the wall, and I love it because he has the personality, the confidence, the maturity to handle it. You're going to see the best Alex Smith you've ever seen this year. Last night was just the beginning. Generally, I've kind of got a rule in the NFL. Like, if you can be an A at, like, you know, owner, GM, coach, quarterback, 
I, I've told you this before. Uh, the three best coaches, in my opinion, in the league right now are Pete, Bill, and Andy. Now, there's other really good coaches. But Andy Reid has built, with John Dorsey, who's now not, not there, this roster is ridiculous. And I think I just, you know, I know I liked him. But when I watched last night, there were times I was like, I think the eight best players in the field, they may have six or seven. Um, it's a possibility. I mean, I listen, Andy Reid dominated. the You know, he was in an NFC championship like five times. It kind of feels like we're seeing the same thing. Well, he knows how to win. You know, he's won, what, 43 games over the last four years? So, And they won, what, 12 or 13 last year? So they're always going to be in the hunt because – they're just a solid football team. The difference is Alex Smith. Is he going to be a guy that's going to challenge you down the football field? And last night we showed it looks like he wants to do that this year. But you saw those receivers, too. He's got speed now at the receiving core and in the running back position where he didn't have that before. And when you got have guys with that type of separation, you're going to throw the football down the field as a quarterback. You almost have to. You can't pass up those type of throws. So we'll have to see if this continues. But last night was a great indication that Alex is going to be a lot more aggressive this year. I would say yes, and I'm going to preface with preface this yes with New England's defense is terrible. Now I'm going yeah. back to the original question. They should hands down win the AFC West. Hands down. Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs. I mean, listen, what they did last night is something that you haven't seen Andy Reid do with Alex Smith in all their time together. The Patriots decided to play a lot of man coverage last night. And they decided, okay, we're going to open up the offense. They're normally a West Coast offense right. where they just dink and dunk and take the little shorts. But if you're going to play man against this speed and we're able to balance up our play calling by running the ball with this, with this rookie phenom, then we're going to take our shots down the field. Right. You know, so they're going to cause some problems in the, NFC, in, in the AFC West. My only contention with Alex Smith, and listen, th the guy played lights out last night. You, you, we can't say enough about how well he played. But the thing that hangs over him and where he's going to be measured at the end of this year is his playoff record yeah. is one and three. Right. And until he rectifies that and he overcomes that, the Patrick Mahomes thing is going to be hanging over his head. I, listen, Seth, I agree with you in terms of the playoff record. But, again, there are certain people that are cautious by nature and then you have to force them mm -hmm. to get over their fear of failure and just let it rip. And I'm t I, I, I know the guy. I'm, he's a cautious. He's a buttoned-up person. But they have him in a position now with Mahomes, and he's already been through this with Kaepernick. He's just going to let it rip this year and let the chips fall where, they're may, where they may. And that's what happened last night. And when Ty Tyreek Hill is so fast, they did that graphic showing him what he would have done in the Olympics if he had run the 200 based off what he did in the and that's what I saw. They, they, they called him in quarters defense, and he just outran his own coverage, and, and Smith let it rip. Against a very good corner out there yeah. uh, on the outside. Who, who but fell asleep. <laughs> yes, yeah. he did. He wow. looked like he was looking for help no, he on was, the inside yeah. or something. But he just let him go. But, uh, yeah, that speed that they have is undeniable. Although he did limp off the field late in the ball game. Uh, I don't cramps. know. How, it was cramps. Was it just cramps? Yeah, it was just okay. cramps. But let's remember, though, Alex has had – now, last night was over the top, but, you know, we, we've had this narrative before. Like him, like him, like him. Weather gets cold. He can't throw the ball down the field vertically. Like, I've seen this before where New England looks bad early yeah. and Kansas City looks good early. Just caution. I want to give him the benefit of, of the doubt because, Warren, you played in an offense where it was wide open. Right. Okay? He's lived in an offense that's kind of handcuffed him. So we, we've assumed that he couldn't throw the ball down the field because the coordinator's not calling plays to go down the field. So now if you open it up, now all of a sudden, wow, this guy can play. He can move it. He can move the ball vertically the down the field. Manager. But even in the West Coast offense, you always have, on the single receiver side, you always have a, a, an option where, to go for a deep route. Mm. And it's you as a quarterback's option to take that if you want to take it. He just doesn't take it very much. But I think Andy's going to call plays now that have more deep route options in there for him to, to throw the football. You look at him against uh, Indianapolis a couple of years ago in the playoffs. Yep. He had a game where he threw for almost 400 yards in the game, but they lost. Giant at the Cowboys Sunday night. Now, Dallas is going to have Ezekiel Elliott. And if last year's any indication, uh, they're going to need him. Uh, nobody gave Dak Prescott more trouble than the Giants. They gave a lot of people trouble. 
stifling the rookie during his otherwise incredible year and handing Dallas two of their three losses. Now, Whitlock, who's got the edge Sunday? Is it the young Dak? Or the Giants deep. You know what? I love the fact you use the word young because you're now starting to appreciate this is a young man's game. Yeah. Dak's a young man. <laughs> Dak Prescott and Des Bryant are going to be a success story this year. Ezekiel Elliott will be great in the running game or, you know, he'll avoid suspension all this year. But Dak, I'm betting on Dak Prescott this year. I know the Giants with their great defense gave him a lot of trouble. Third time is going to be the charm for Dak. This is Dak's year to step up and become a major superstar in this league. He's going to do it because he's young, he's focused, he's passionate. He's what you think. Is, he's what Tom Brady used to be before he became 40, and now he's starting to show the miles. Dak Prescott will be tremendous. They'll take care. I like Dak over the defense this, this I year. I actually do, and Ooh. the reason I do is because I think that defense for the Giants is going to be on the field a long time. They really struggled in preseason. Odell Beckham may not play, will certainly not be 100%. The left side of that offensive line is a problem. It is running back by committee. And I kind of just feel, and, I, and I've said this, I just think the Giants are in transition more than they'll admit. I don't know about Ben McAdoo. I have my doubts. OBJ's not healthy. They, they can't solve this offensive line. It's been three years now. How long do you rebuild it? Like, I think what's going to happen in this game and what Dallas is going to do to the Giants this year, they're going to reverse this, is that New York's defense, as great as it is, even the Seahawks, even the Ravens, if you're on the field for 36 minutes, you're not the same defense. Good point. But there are certain teams in your division that you know how to play, and I think the Giants know how to play the Dallas Cowboys. Eli Manning has won more games in his career against the Cowboys than any other team, so he knows how to beat the Cowboys. Beckham not playing is going to be huge because he's a big part of why they've been able to beat the Cowboys twice last year. So if he plays, I think they beat him. But if he doesn't play, I think it's a much closer ball game. I still think even without him playing that you have to go with the defense as, a, as what you just said. Giants defense. The Giants defense because they do know how to play this guy. There's a certain comfort level. Um, certain teams within your division, they just have your number. It's a tough game no matter what. It didn't, I, and, I remember, and I know you had it. When we were playing, when I was with the Niners, it didn't matter what the Saints did. It was going to be a one-score game. Right. We, we, we knew it was going to be a 10-13 game. And we had much more talent. It was just something about the way that club played us. And I think that this is a team right now, they understand how to play Dak. They understand what's going on. I don't think they're going to be on the field as much as you think because as, especially if um, Odell doesn't play, I think uh, McAdoo is going to make certain that he tries to slow the game down and not allow them to just grind them out because it won't be a high-scoring game in that situation. And I personally think... Uh, Odell should not play because he has a high ankle sprain and that could bother him the rest of the season. I agree. He's a receiver that does a lot of quick cuts and he's going to need that ankle to, to be able to make those cuts. If he's not 100%, he's not the same player. You know, it's funny. I, I like Brian Billick, but I, you know, they used to call him an offensive genius and I was like, why is the defense always better than the offense? You know, people say Ben McAdoo is a great offensive guy. Like, how come the offensive line and the running back situation is so average? I, I'm really... I can't get my – I can't support this Giant team. There's so many – people. listen, they spent a lot of money on their defensive they spent front. a lot of money on And it's field. really good. It's good. It's a really good mm. defensive front. And secondary. Tell yeah. me how many answers that offense has be besides OBJ. Like that you definitively know that's really good. Brandon Marshall. Uh, just got this year. Okay. And Sterling Shepard's a, a good – He's yeah, never he's played with yeah. Eli in a real game like Brady and Brandon Cooks, a real NFL game. Just not preseason OTAs. But look at the defense, but but you still look at the division and you look at the offenses and you're talking about Zeke and Dak and Dez and you, you look at what Washington had of, of you know before they let everything go. They had to build a defense if they wanted to compete. So and you got to pick one side of the ball and they picked the one side of the ball and started building it up that gave them a chance to compete. The Giants, that is. Yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting because the Giants have three starting corners in my opinion. And most teams only have mm -hmm. two or one right. and a half. That's and they got a great they get great safety play from Collins. It is going to be a great matchup for Dak Prescott. The Cowboys may figure out how to win this game, but what I'm going to be analyzing is can Dak challenge the Giants and be better against the Giants than he was a year ago? Because this is the best defensive personnel yes. that he'll see all year. I'm interested in Dak versus that defense 
and I think Dak's going to step up. I think he's going to be improved. It's the ultimate challenge for a quarterback, and I think he's ready for it's it. It's the best secondary in football. Yeah. I think it is. It, no. Matched by a great defensive uh, front. Wow, well, I don't know it's about that. It's really you, good. You put the defensive uh, front Denver's with secondary is pretty good. Those guys are getting old. That, that, you corners. Seattle's secondary is pretty two, good. Two, three years, you corners fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> Falcons, who opened the season against the Bears in Chicago on Sunday. Atlanta is looking to avoid the dreaded Super Bowl hangover, but Matt Ryan just wrote in the Players' Tribune that the Falcons have the weapons to get back to the big game this year and win it. But I know at least one crazy person <laughs> who's skeptical. I do not have Atlanta in. Um, Atlanta lost their coordinator. And I think that division last year was a mess defensively. And I think Tampa is getting better and Carolina bounces back. And I think they have now a first place schedule and they came off that Super Bowl hangover loss. So I don't I'm not saying Atlanta is terrible, but I have them pulling back closer to 500 or a game over 500. Cowherd does not have the Atlanta Falcons yeah. as one of the 10 best teams in the league. Right. They got Julio Jones yeah. and the reigning MVP. They got Devonta Freeman, great running backs. Yeah. And you don't have them in the top 10. No. Why? Uh, first of all, schedules matter. Okay, they decide college football titles and Super Bowl titles. They matter. Okay, this is a team that plays now a first-place schedule. Last year was the perfect storm. Carolina, Tampa, and New Orleans were all atrocious defensively. Then out of division, they got to play the Raiders' defense and the Niners' defense and Green Bay's beat-up defense. Okay, look at, their last, look at their last eight games this year. Okay, oh, at Carolina, Cowboys, at Seattle. Buccaneers at the Saints and with the Panthers. Minnesota's got one of the best defenses in football. By the way, in their first eight games, they play four playoff teams. The schedule is completely different. Carolina's going to rebound. You got a Seattle on the schedule. You got Dallas on the schedule. And Shanahan's gone. Every year, every year, there's a really good team, at least one, yeah. that goes into the tank. We, Carolina two years ago. Super Bowl tank. Atlanta's not the same Coward, club. Coward, Coward, and then Warren Moon could attest to this. Julio Jones is a freak of nature, All right. man. Wide receiver. He, he's like a, a thick Randy Moss. All right. And that is everywhere Randy Moss showed up, pretty much records fail offensively. All right. Julio Jones is kind of that same kind of guy, man. He makes a defense make some decisions that they just normally wouldn't because the they way, fear him year before so the much. Falcons got to the Super Bowl. He was still there. They weren't winning a lot of games. I think Atlanta's going to be better on defense this year because of all those young players that they had on defense last year, especially in the secondary and those linebackers are going to be able to get after the quarterback a little bit better. So they're going to have to be better on defense because of that schedule. You're talking about that first place schedule they're playing this year, and I think they will be better on defense. And I don't think their offense is going to be any, any worse last year, even though they lost their offensive coordinator. Steve, Car Steve uh, Sarkeesian runs the same type of offense, the same type of West Coast style. So they're not going to be different that much offensively. I think the difference is going to be on defense. They're going to have to be better because they're playing better teams, but I think they will be because that defense got much more improved as the season went on last year. I think this might be a first for the show. I agree with Jason and disagree with you. <laughs> 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 Finally wising up. Hey, listen, man. Matty Ice has got too many weapons yeah. for them offensively not to be as potent as they were last year. Defensively, listen, they're young, they're fast, they're super aggressive, and they've got one of, and, and they've got one of the best defensive coordinators in, in slash head coach in the league. Okay, he's the guy that orchestrated and built the Legion of Boom. Okay, so they're only going to get better. The only question for Atlanta is, can they get over the Super Bowl right. hangover? Right. Can they get over just giving that game away because they are two running plays and a field goal away from. Win in the they got to face Breeze twice, Jameis twice, Cam twice. Oh, they got to face Dak. You still got to face. Make, the, you got to face the their MVP from last year. That's not the 27 gonna, Yankees. Be <laughs> tougher, yeah. Well, face but Russell. Dallas has the same situation. They had a last place schedule last year too, and they went 13 and three. They're going to play a first place schedule this year too, so they've got a tougher schedule. I like too. Dallas. But like, you like Dallas. I like Dallas. Yes. But Let not, me Atlanta. Make an analogy. not Atlanta. Let me make an analogy that that will sound preposterous. I really think. Matt Ryan playing in a dome, 
is similar. He's not this guy, but he's similar to Peyton Manning to oh, me, man. Oh, Lord. In terms of ball, he's <laughs> accurate. Peyton Manning. He's accurate. Oh, he's great before the snap. He, he, I'm just, I think you're underestimating how good Matt Ryan is. I told you. He's Andy Dalton. Oh, oh, stop it. You just called him Peyton Manning. Was, I didn't say he's that. He's the reigning he... MVP of the exactly. league. Yes. Darling. Give him exactly. some respect. Peyton Manning. Listen, man, he's not Peyton Manning, but he he's in a dome. He's got weapons. He's smart pre-snap. He's, he, he's coming into his own as a great player. And then the biggest trump card, and God bless if this guy stays healthy, he's got Julio Jones. Oh, Peyton oh. Manning. You know Julio what? Jones is... He, he's incredible, I, I man. I hope, are we taping this? Because I want to pull this back. <laughs> you just called him Peyton Manning. <laughs> I did not Listen, call him. The, 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 the one thing that I will agree with Colin on is that up until last year, his career has been like a roller coaster at Six Flags. Yes. Right. Just up and down and up right. and down. Guys, so again, this year will be, for me, a prove it year. When everyone talked about him not being in the top 15 players, this was, this was my reasoning. He hasn't done it over a long period of time. He's had some good years, mm -hmm. some bad the, years, gonna... and then he just blew up last 4, year. 4,500 yards, five okay, straight years. He did. Continue. He had a career year. What was year the team before record? Cam had a career year. What was the playoff year? record? 4,500 yards, five straight years. What was the team record? I know Warren Moon respects that. I do. I didn't say I didn't That's respect consistent. it. I said, what's the record and what's the and playoff record? By the way, record? I don't have him at 2 and 14. I got him at 9 and 7, 8 and 8. A respectable team. Nine didn't Drew Brees? <laughs> didn't did, did Drew Brees throw for like five thousand yards Coward. a couple years ago? They beat up the Patriots in the Super Bowl and should have won the damn last Super last Bowl. Year. And it, it, they're one of the best teams in football, man. And Julio Jones no, may be the most talented player. Just because you're louder doesn't mean you make it <laughs> right. You're loud and wrong right now. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the show. Warren Moon and Eric Davis are back. Let's move to Seattle with the Seahawks defensive lineman Michael Bennett alleged this week that Las Vegas police wrongfully detained him back in August after reports of a nightclub shooting. Bennett says he was an innocent bystander, but police say they are investigating whether he was involved in an altercation before being detained. Now Bennett's lawyer is calling for the police to be investigated. All right, Cowherd, will this situation be a distraction for the Seahawks this week? No, because I think a lot of players in NFL locker rooms have gone through situations similarly where they have struggled with police officers and law enforcement. And I, it's, I'm sitting next to a Hall of Fame football player who has, and I think, Eric, you've mentioned before, you've had situations that I think that is not a unique club in African-American circles where young people, um, by the way, young people in the NFL are rich, and they drive through neighborhoods and live in great neighborhoods and they get pulled over and Warren's talked about this. So I think a lot of guys in that locker room, and, and I think it could bond them. Yeah, I think it'll galvanize this, this locker room because a lot of these players, like you said, have been through situations maybe not as bad as what Michael went through, but just being profiled like I was. I, I was pulled over a ton of times in a certain type of car I was driving just because they thought that I was a... African-American guy in a nice car, and let's pull him over and see if there's anything to this. But it was never nothing to it. But when you go through that situation, it's a very frightening situation because you don't, you don't know what that officer's thinking. He looks like he's a little nervous or scared. You're worried about doing anything to tick him off. So, I under, so a lot of these players can relate to that. But I think this team is used to distractions. They're used to having a lot of things happen around it over the last four or five years since Pete DNA. has been there. Really and they is. know how to handle those things well, and they know how to galvanize when it comes to playing the game. Yeah. And they can still deal with those things once the game is over. Before you go, Eric, I just want to be clear with viewers. Warren knows the Seahawks very well. He does yeah. their radio uh, color commentary, so he knows this team very well. Go ahead, Eric. And I wanted to add on what Warren was just saying about the, the locker room and guys going through it. They also know the person, and I, those guys know Michael. And when Michael getting involved in something, I know Michael. You believe what he says. Right. So the locker room will believe Michael, so it won't be an issue. It's not. It's not. Some guys do things, and we've all played with guys where you're like, okay, okay, like, <laughs> like he, he, this dude is always walking right. on the edge, and he could have stepped over. Right. You know that Michael is the guy that they are going to believe in. So I think it will galvanize them, and it, they will rally around him. I, I'm gonna play a little bit of the other side and just, I'm going to be interested to see how this, not just this week, over the course of this season. Russell Wilson's already had to answer questions about this. 
Uh, I don't think this is going away. There seems to be a bit of a back and forth between Michael Bennett and the Las Vegas police. He's going to be engulfed in this because what Michael Bennett's attorney, a black civil rights attorney, already been on the record. I don't think this was racially motivated. Michael Bennett's own attorney. And then I think that because the NFL came out with a statement that basically uh, defended Bennett and kind of took a ding at the police, again, the thing the police have on their side in Las Vegas is they are... 1,000% aware at all times when you live in Las Vegas and you're a police officer, everything you do inside of a casino, a nightclub on the strip is under surveillance. But wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't Michael Bennett give a, give a, get a pass here? So I think it's reasonable to assume that if I was handcuffed face down on cement, that's pretty traumatic. Right. I mean, that's, that, you've gone through a situation. In the middle of the yeah, Okay. No, I've so, been through it. Okay. Or, yeah. So that is traumatic. It would be traumatic for me. If you're a little bit traumatized and within 12 hours you are asked and you think it's racially motivated, and let's say video shows... It came out two weeks later, but go ahead. But let's say, let's say video comes out and says it doesn't look like it's... I'm going to give a guy a pass if he is super emotional post that. Two weeks later, said it was racially motivated. Again, the nightclub is filled with predominantly black people. So, and again, I just don't think police wake up every day saying, you know what, I want to go confront a large athletic person. That's I don't, not, I don't either. That's not their mentality. And the police in Las Vegas are instructed every day. What you do inside those casinos is on camera, whether you turn your body camera on or not. And so, again, I'm just... This thing is going to spin a bit out of control. There's a pissing match going on, and the cameras are going to settle it. And if my, the, the cameras will show if right. he was in an altercation beforehand. But even if he the, was in an altercation beforehand, that's not why the police said they chased him. The police said no, they no. chased him because they thought he right. was the shooting I suspect again, and he was running. I, get, I understand so that. So that's, that's a completely that different That could issue. be on camera, too. There wasn't if even he's, a shooting. Hold on. That could be on camera, too. If you're crouching behind a slot machine, the police say they want to talk to you, and you run and run and jump over a wall, and the police are there because they think there's an active shooter... Of course they're going to chase after you. And so, again, he has said one thing. This thing, I just don't think it's going to go away this week. I think they're going to be dealing with it all season. By the way, the, the, the video may not show the audio. My takeaway is we're going to get a bunch of video, and both sides will have their argument. And if you believe Michael Bennett, you're going to say, come on now. And if you believe the cops, you're going to be like, well, he did run. But Michael can always say, hell yeah, Iran. Somebody was shooting inside a casino. And a lot of his ex his uh, complaint was excessive force more so than the, yes. than the racial profiling, that the fact that the guy put his knee in his back, that he that he uh, put the handcuffs on to where he couldn't even feel his fingers, the, the point of maybe having a gun to his head that we don't know about yet. Isn't All it, those different things are, are, are part of what traumatized Michael in this situation. Isn't it reasonable to assume that whatever side you want to believe, you'll validate regardless of the video? That's the world we now live in. I think the video is going to be conclusive. Okay. I, I really do. All right. It'll be the I, first time. I'm again. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be the very first time. I grew up in a football world. And again, in this world, people can argue anything, but we say the eye in the sky don't lie. <laughs> no, 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 I, I get it. But people, the eye in the sky don't lie.